but the Northern Hemisphere people that say Super Rugby is underrated are just the people that are rugby fans that are trying to be super edgy. So if you <laughs> want to like support like a different competition, and really they should just stick to what they know or don't know in Ed's case. We literally did not say Bears would be winning. Ed said Gloucester would be winning. <laughs> Honestly, rugby commentary is the worst. I mean, these are the Southern Hemisphere ones where they're like, Charlie and Savannah the bus! <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Much Dare About Rugby, the podcast where we chat about everything rugby. If you like the content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any more of our videos. Right, let's jump into the episode then. We are doing today a overrated or underrated episode so we will be going through some topics some people uh everything related to rugby obviously and we will be trying to say or determine whether they are overrated or underrated so let's just jump right into the first topic the first one is owen farrell overrated or underrated max and lambert come to you first so just to just make it clear yeah. we've Mackie, Ma, uh, Mackie doesn't know anything on the list. Maliki does because we we compile the list. But Max's reaction will be one hundred percent first time um, <laughs> off the cuff. So Max, and go for it. Um, um for, I I think he's properly rated, but I could see how some would argue that he is overrated at the moment and is not playing that great. But I would say um, Fowl is properly rated. I think he's. I think he's underrated. I think I actually generally. I actually generally think this. I actually because think about it, people have been slating him for so long, and like anyone who's not English, think like hates him also just because he can be a bit of a dick on the pitch. But his actual skill, I think his kicking is like ri- ridiculous. Like he's one. He's like the second highest points to score for England, and he's definitely up there as one of the best tens in the world. But I just don't think he gets that credit. If you get what I mean. Yeah, because people hate him. <laughs> yeah, same, yeah, essentially. I, like, the, half the thing with Owen Farrell is that uh, he's just had a bit of a dip in form recently, like a tiny dip. And then England beat France yesterday and suddenly he's back in everyone's Lions team. And it's the same with someone like Marito, Jay. So <laughs> can, you really, so can you really say that he's like, he's definitely not overrated, is he? But can you really say that he's properly rated when everyone's literally just got, kicked him out of their Lions sides and... He's underrated, mate, isn't he? He's yeah, underrated. He is He's underrated. sick. He's so underrated, good. Yeah, yeah. He's so good. Right, moving oh, on man. swiftly. We have a bit of a different one now. Uh, it is uh, a competition. So we're just going to go straight for Mackie. Overrated or underrated? The Six Nations Championship. Oh, uh, okay. I'd say underrated. I think, I think people take it for granted each year. Like, and we don't actually appreciate how, like, good it is, if, you, if that makes sense. Like, that we have, like, basically a European Championship with the best teams every year. Like, if you compare it to football, where it takes every, like, two or four years to have, like, a major competition. But in rugby, we literally have, like, a European Cup, essentially, every year. I'd say it's yeah. underrated. I think you can compare it to, like, if, like, you know how in the Southern Hemisphere, they have the, the what is it, like, Tri-Nations or whatever, which is just New Zealand, Australia... Uh, or what is it rugby championship it's called now yeah, um, with, with Argentina as well which is like good but it's just not it's nowhere near got the hype as six nations and I think just especially when you're in the stadiums and the fact that every like in the UK you're going to all the biggest stadiums in like and then also France and Italy it's just kind of a mental competition so definitely underrated six nations overrated mate just <laughs> <laughs> just tell you why <laughs> Because because Italy are part of it, and the, there's always going to be one match on a weekend where you just don't really give a shit, and you you literally just know what the result's going to be every time. Because Italy haven't won a game in how how long? Five years? Six years now? Yeah. And they got beaten by Wales. A bit embarrassing, isn't it? Like I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know. I just think obviously obviously I'm kind of pulling a leg a little bit. It's it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good tournament, but. Is if Italy went out, well, if Italy just got better, can Italy just get good? I think they, I think they are not as bad as people make out. They're good, but their defense is not good. <laughs> like their attack is good. Their attack is not really that bad at all. Their attack was that good. Like that's like that's like the All Blacks. So the All Blacks attack is like outrageous. Their defense, meh. Um, <laughs> yeah, and maybe Italy will be the next All Blacks. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. No, I, 
I, I don't know. I think I think the Six Nations is obviously. I, I agree with you, Max, and we do take it for granted. But they need to find something to spice it up, especially at the moment when there's no crowds. Because mm. I think maybe a change in commentary. Commentary's awful, <laughs> honestly. Rugby commentary's the worst. I mean, these are the Southern Hemisphere ones where they're like, Charlie and Savar the bus. <laughs> 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 I reckon they should just change. You know what I reckon they should. Do? I reckon they should just change the format of it so that there's a semi and a, there's actually a final. Yeah, I was just thinking that that would be a really good idea. That would be actually mad. A final would be so sick. A six stage yeah. final. <laughs> I'll be actually yeah. mad. Liv Clark, how good is this guy? <laughs> what I think they should do. What I think they should do is, if someone doesn't win the Grand Slam, then there should be a final between the the team in first and second. Yes, that'd be a dank idea. That would actually be mad. The grand final at Twickenham. And England win. <laughs> <laughs> England always win. We have to win. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Moving on swiftly. So Six Nations is obviously underrated and we take it for granted. But I said overrated just to spice it up. You know? <laughs> um, okay. So next one. Quite topical, actually, seeing as uh, what we saw yesterday might not have been his, his finest performance. Antoine Dupont, the French scrum half. Maliki, underrated or overrated? Bloody hell. I think I want to say underrated, not going to lie, just because I think his his support play is, is definitely the best in the world. And he is the, he, he is by far the best nine in the world. But I don't know if everyone's kind of like starting to see that now. That's the thing. I don't know if people, so I don't know. Maybe I'll probably go properly rated right now. Just because I think everyone has like caught onto the hype of Dupont. Like I think at the beginning of the Six Nations or last year, I would have gone underrated um, for those reasons because he wasn't really like as known. But I think now everyone's seen how good he is and see how in like influential he is for France. I think he is properly rated right now. Mackie Doge. Yeah, I think I agree. Because like I don't know, I think I'm earing on the side of overrated by some people like so i think some people are like he's gonna change the game like <laughs> he's the best nine of a generation like in the he world is completely different to any um, other nine at the moment though that's the thing so he it is like kind of shifting the way a nine can play but yeah. but he's not really doing anything that different he's just got a bit of french flair about him it, it, that that's it for you yeah and... but he, he scores a lot more tries than the normal nine would I think A. A. Ron at his uh, A. A. Ron Smith at his prime way better than Antoine Dupont. Ben Young's uh, Ben Young outplayed Antoine Dupont yesterday. Yeah. Ben Ben Young scores a sh- a shy yeah, ton of tries for England. Super. He scores loads of tries. So I don't. I, you know, maybe Ben Young's is underrated. <laughs> oh yeah, Ben Young's is chronically yeah. underrated. Like he had a bit of a weird time when he would take ages to pass from the base of the rock or something but now he's been like trained by eddie to just whip it away quickly love it ben is definitely underrated definitely underrated right so think, an, an extra one because he's old an extra one for everyone there ben young's underrated antoine dupont properly rated there you go <laughs> right Coming on to England then, we are going to rate Eddie Jones. Is he underrated or overrated? Eddie Jones, Maxim. Uh, oh, oh uh, no. By, it de- firstly, it depends by who, but I'd say like um, underrated. Because underrated. Mate, he's just he just gets to World Cup finals, doesn't he? He's a bit of a machine. And I think especially at the moment i'm gonna go into a dip i think he's underrated but i think tends to go dip between world cup cycles all that's what happened last all i think the things if we remember what he's done with this with the england side it's pretty incredible uh, we were actually we were quite bad when he picked us up we literally lost in the group stages of our own world cup <laughs> which is which is really really bad and he picked us up and basically made us favorite for a world cup um, and then build on that. Now we're actually expected to win stuff. So I'd say on that front, he's underrated. Yeah, I think I think just be, just from like even like now where where England have been in a dip of form, people have been like, why is he not playing all these young players? Like that includes me. I'm literally saying that. So I think, but the fact is that he obviously has a process that he knows works, and it's obviously proven by him being able to lead England to a lead. Uh, was not a, lead, a win yesterday at France against France, 
And I think, yeah, as you said, all the stuff he's done for England, like getting to a World Cup final, obviously we didn't quite finish off, but he is kind of mental as a coach, like actually quite dank. But then again, England do have a lot of dank players. So I guess it kind of comes to one, one with the other, like hand in hand, but you can't really have, I guess you can have a dank coach and average players, but you're not going to get to the levels that England kind of got to without both of them. So yeah. I, I'm leaning I on... He's- so I mean, he's probably like properly rated to be honest like he's still the England coach obviously there's people out there that still believe in him um and he, you know we're winning here and there so what what more what more do you want and, and honestly I'd probably rather be in France because I class France as a better team than Wales so it kind of shows when we do play the way he wants us to play and, and we do execute like the way he wants us to is he going we to win. take it to the next world next World Cup though? Do you think? Do you think he's going to last that long? Probably, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And mm. and the thing that really impressed me about Eddie Jones is that he took that Stuart Lancaster side of 2015 that was kind of outrageously bad, and he basically took the same starting lineup. I, I'm not sure how many positions he changed. He might have changed like two or three people, um, but he took the same group of players essentially. And we toured Australia and we whitewashed them, which is kind of incredible just to see, like, maybe Stuart Lancaster's just an, a bad coach. But the thing is, Ed, the thing is with that, but the thing is with that is, like, OK, we didn't play that well in the World Cup. We essentially just had a blip of, like, two games against Australia and I think it was Wales. And Wales. But, like, if you look before the build-up to that World Cup, we were, well, we were favourites to win it. So I don't know whether Stuart Lancaster was actually the that bad. Favourites to win it. Yes, we were. Favorites. We were literally favourites. Yeah, we were. We were favourites to win it on the bookies. Jeez. You know, I'm 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 going to say Eddie Jones is properly rated just because I think he's ex- so expected to win. With he like he gets he's been slated because we lost because he's so expected to win, which I think England should be winning because of our side. If you get what I mean. So I'm going properly rated as well. Fair enough. That brings us on to the next kind of linking linking point, which is uh, England rugby as, as, as a whole and in general, and whether England rugby itself, the international side, is overrated, underrated, or properly rated. What do we reckon, Mackie? Oh, these are tough. Oh, every time he just cries oh. deeply like it's such a hard decision. <laughs> England rugby, as in like the national side as right now. The national side, yeah. Um... Right now, I think underrated because um, just based on literally on the previous few games, how we, we've lost some games, I think that's not, doesn't show how, how good the England team actually is. Obviously, being France has brought that back, but essentially people were just saying England are absolute shy and after losing to, to both Wales and Scotland. So I would say underrated based on that. I still think England are one of the best teams in the world. <clears throat> despite losing those two games. Um, so, yeah, underrated, I'd say. I think I have to agree with you there. I think going, if you're looking at who are the best sides, in like the best international sides, you're always thinking All Blacks, I don't know, South Africa. And I think England are 100%, 100% up there with, with them in, as some of the best sides. Well, definitely right now or in the last, like, I don't know, however long, however many years. I think we have, like, so many good players like not only in our side but like as a like the selection from all our club uh club options if you get what i mean so i think just as a side ourselves we have just like amazing depth especially in like flankers actually right ridiculous how much depth we have it's actually insane but so i think it's the same in every position though i think like if you look at like even like yeah the only the only position that we don't have good depth in i think is scrum half Mm. Even no, even then, even then we even it even at scrum half, I'd say we have quite quite a lot of options. Maybe not yeah. world class options, but we have a lot of like good options. Yeah, but if you look at like ten at ten, for example, or like hooker and prop, mm. second row, we literally have so many so many options that are actually like world class players. Yeah, that, and that's the thing. I think a lot of players who play for England who may not be like just like the big names like Maratoje are like, like for example, Joe Launchby, he is definitely a world-class lock, but he just isn't seen as that, but he just definitely is a world-class lock, I, I think. And I think it goes the same for so many other players. Launchbury! 
Yeah, um, no, England are probably overrated, to be honest. <laughs> you can't yeah. make a straight to face saying that. <laughs> Definitely not. We are underrated. Said nobody ever! <laughs> <laughs> we are underrated. You know, who's the team that everyone wants to beat, realistically? You know, the, the French have Le Croix, and, you That's know, we absolutely destroyed them yesterday, let's face it. We really proved why we're the best best Northern Hemisphere side. If If... Like England wouldn't have these rivalries if we weren't, you know, the best. And mm. and it wouldn't mean so much to Wales to beat us if it was like, you know, if we were if we were bad. It, it would be like playing Italy. So it's just like you know. Well, yeah, you, Wales don't really care about like beating Ireland or Scotland that much, did they? It's, it's like, all about it's us. So it's all about us. Than, yeah, yeah, that's such we're the best because we're the best. So I would still say because there's still that meaning there. And if if we had dro- dropped form drastically and like not performed for a couple of years or something and kept losing in the Six Nations and kept coming fourth or fifth spot like Wales do, um, then it would have been, you know, a different different answer probably, and we would have said that probably England are a bit overrated and and you know not quite what they were. But I think you know pro- pro- properly rated or underrated somewhere in the middle there. Mm. Um, there's arguments for both, but wait. Moving on swiftly. Um, okay, another league now. Um, Maxin, I'm going to come to you first because this one's one where we thought we'd, we'd get you really maybe a little bit heated up. Um, so, obviously, with the incredible try that we saw at the weekend, we know what Mal and I are, are going to say, but uh, Super Rugby, the Southern Hemisphere, we're talking about all, kind of all forms. I guess we're more focusing on RTRR, the New Zealand version, or or the Australian version, um, but that's a bit out of the picture. Okay, no okay. Sure. But, but the uh, New Zealand version mainly, because that's obviously... Super Rugby Outer Overrated or Underrated? Yeah. Uh, I think it's properly rated. No, you are meant to say overrated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's overrated, because I think it is an exciting competition. But I think, like, for what it is, yeah, like, it's, like, you have what four or five sides that are, all have like international players that clearly play with some kind of flair and you get score lines and tries that are really great to watch so i'd say in terms of like spectator sport wise i'd say it's properly rated although i do think that some northern hemisphere people do overrate it slightly based on the fact that there's an equally good slash better league right on their doorstep that they can actually go and watch and engage in and don't have to get in at 4 a.m. to <laughs> get up at 4 a.m. to watch. Um, we literally, you see the other day, the Premier Rugby literally has three or four score lines, which has one point difference between them and some outrageously good tries. Um, yeah, but Quinn's lost. So obviously the, <laughs> <laughs> the Premiership's overrated as fuck and Super Rugby's underrated because... You know, you don't have to support a side. You can just go and watch a dank match of rugby. And it doesn't really affect you that much. Hmm. But you've still seen a dank match of rugby. Do you see for Anganuku's try, mate? That just that just that whole moment, even though he was in touch, even though it wasn't a try. I've, like, got, that actually, moment. I've got an interesting I think Super Rugby Altaroa is overrated, but Super Rugby as a whole like the old format of Super Rugby when it had or like the New Zealand teams, the Australian teams, South. I think that was severely underrated, especially by the Northern Hemisphere. I think Super Rugby Outer Row, it only has like what four or five teams. I can't remember. Five. I, just, I think that like, and we know it's going to be the Crusader. I think comparing it to the Premiership, there's just that lack of like com- competitiveness. Like I think it is kind of fair to say that because the crusaders are just miles above everyone it is like in terms of actual rugby it's really entertaining to watch but i think the competition itself the old format when it had the south africa australia new zealand then had like haguarez and then <clears throat> also the what's called the sun wolves i just think that's so much more exciting because it's got clubs from different countries and i think it just was way it was so interesting seeing like the lions from south africa like in the final against like the Crusaders, something. It's just like something you win. It, 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 all, it was almost like Champions Cup esque because you get to see the clubs from the different countries. If that makes sense, but you still have that those rivalries between like the the clubs from their own country as well. So I think Altaroa okay. slightly overrated, only slightly. 
because it is still dank rugby, but Super Rugby in itself, the old format was severely underrated. Yeah. No, the, I the think I think super, super Rugby is completely underrated. If you're going to ask me, it's completely underrated. Yeah. Like, you, especially at the moment when when you can actually watch a match which has an atmosphere and a crowd. Like, it's actually just the highlights are better than sitting through. You know, Mate, I don't know. I don't know if you watched the um the the Brumbies Reds game, but did you see the crowds there? <laughs> <laughs> there weren't any. There was like oh, there know. were. There were about ten thousand people there, weren't there? But like, yeah, but that should be a packed out stadium, shouldn't it? Yeah, they, but it's... rugby union in Australia is going down the pan, mate. It's, yeah. it's all about RTO. Yeah, like, no, it's actually yeah, sell out crowds. Boring. To be fair, the game. You know what? Like, if you yeah. look at okay, look in England, every single stadium is sold out pretty much every single week. You don't, don't know who's literally one point. It's so exciting. Who would have said like Bears are top of the Prem right now? No one would have predicted that. Us, like, I, predicted that. I literally would. I could have told you that at the end of last. No, season. you couldn't. Everyone thought Exeter sure was... said that last season. <laughs> no, we didn't. We literally did not say Bears would be winning. I'd say Gloucester would be winning the Prem. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Gloucester are good. Actually, embarrassing. Like, are we ever like Exeter's dip? Like, I don't know. I just think a Super Rugby is just a beat eight Champions Cup when you've literally B-tech. got a European Cup on your door on your doorstep with all the best teams playing. Mate, you're a B Tech rugby pundit. <laughs> no, I'm really not. Um, <laughs> right, okay, moving on from the Super Rugby Premiership debate. Actually, I have most... one last thing to say on Super Rugby. The people that, the Northern Hemisphere people that say Super Rugby is underrated are just the people that are rugby fans that are trying to be super edgy. So they <laughs> want to like support like a different competition and really they should just stick to what they know or don't know in Ed's case. Um, I am uh, super edgy, man. I am super edgy. Look at my helmet head. That is edgy. <laughs> it has an edgy lid. Um... <laughs> No, moving on swiftly. Moving on swiftly. Um, point seven on the list. Moving on from Super Rugby and the Southern Hemisphere up to the Northern Hemisphere, the Scotland international side. Now we've seen obviously them beat England in recent times and uh, probably should have beaten Wales as well. Of course, you didn't get to see them against France. So what do we make of that almost emerging Scotland side at the moment, Maliki? Properly rated. I think they have a lot of talent, but... They obviously have a lot of weaknesses as well. And I, I think, I don't know. I think they, they, they have a lot of good, they have a really good team and they can win, but I, I don't think they are, they are just a mid table mid, in terms of six nations, they are just a number three or four spot team, in my opinion, like probably number four after Ireland. Well, we'll see today, won't we? <laughs> you're going to eat your words, mate. You're going to eat your words when Scotland have to run over Ireland. Stuart I'm not sure. I, I genuinely, I genuinely, genuinely think Ireland is a much better team than Scotland. Genuinely. Because you're Irish. I agree with that, but I think Scotland are underrated still. Because, I mean, even if... I mean, they haven't had Russell play for them for a while, apart from the Six Nations before. Um, and I think, like, the foundations on which they're built is just very, very good. Like, they're or 10 and 15, obviously, Russell and Hogg, arguably two, the two best in Europe. Mm. So, like, you're going to have a good side based on that. And I think, like, I mean, we saw them beat England. Um, they basically should have beaten Wales, which they got jammed out. They actually just lost. So I think at the moment, people aren't talking about them enough because I seriously think they are underrated as a team. They're really impressive. Um, yeah. And with, like, Russell and Hogg, in, especially in attack, dangerous and they're getting some really good players emerging from the pack um like rich and in the back line and in the back, and line. In the back line as well harris in the back line is, is been playing exceptionally well um and they've also got sean maitland on the wing who's just the best winger in the world isn't it no people saying that sean maitland should go on the lions tour and stuff did he he'd been on like two before hasn't he what how <laughs> should he I, he's a he quality player should not though. How many other wingers? How many other wingers can can we list? Like we'll come on to one. Actually, I think I'll make him my next point for overrated, underrated. Who uh, actually we got we got three wingers coming up now for overrated, underrated. So we'll we'll I guess we'll come on to three wingers who would probably make the Lions tour over um, <laughs> Sean Maitland. <laughs> Sean Maitland, oh my days! On to the wingers number. We'll go with the Scottish one first, since we just touched on Scotland. Do do get do Van der Merwe. 
Scottish. Scottish. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. I think. I think he is underrated still. I think he hasn't hasn't. If anyone has watched his highlights for Pro 14 and his try score, looked at his try scoring record for Pro 14, he is outrageous. I think obviously the light is going on some other um, Six Nations wingers, which we will come on to. But I think he is literally an absolute beast. Like he unstoppable in once he's in that like what's it called like the five meters from the try line. If you just put like the if the try he scored against England, how the hell did he actually score that? Like, let's be honest, he had like three people on it. That is actually kind of ridiculous. Like he, I think he's severely um, not severely. I think he is underrated though. I think he is definitely should be classed as one of the best wingers in the world, and I think he has the club form to back that up. And I'm excited for him to be in the Prem. Duhan van der Moer for Lions captain. <laughs> no, Ed. Uh, Definitely I think not. he is. I think he's um, properly rated, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'm not to. I mean, hopefully, they'll be an underrated for overrated for Pro 14, but we all know that it's just absolutely oh. terrible league. Um, even so, <laughs> like having scored those, like clearly he's an exceptional player and really powerful. But I'd love to see how he goes in the prem. I, that's, I just think he has a lot more to give, and I think yeah, people, yeah. like he is good finisher. But I think he definitely will be showing. In the Prem, fingers crossed. Let's see how he goes for Worcester. Like, that's such a hard team to like make a judgment for. Like, obviously, no offense to Worcester, but imagine he was playing for Quinns. Imagine he was playing for Quinns. Like, that'd be insane. That'd be scary, especially with uh, Morris out injured at the moment. We do need another winger, to be fair. DTH, <laughs> um, D- <laughs> VDM, mate. How you doing? <laughs> Come to the South London um, squadron. Um, so what's, the, what's the verdict on him then? Yeah, I think he's think properly, properly rated, rated, to be honest. Like, because people know that he's scary and they literally have the camera on him during Scotland's games or have done. And they just say, this guy's an absolute tank. And the commentators do gas him up a little bit. So, but they're right. They're right in gassing him up because he is mm. terrifying. And he does kind of have to go on the Lions tour because he's just an absolute monster. We need um, that big winger like character as just like a powerhouse as an option like the places where he makes meters he just shouldn't he, yeah. like no one should really no one should yeah. he's scary he's an animal um moving on to a second winger uh mal wanted to put this one in because he wanted to gas him up james low mal <laughs> i'm actually not even gonna gas him up i would say i'm not gonna lie over, just having to think about it like right now, I think he might be slightly overrated by Ireland themselves. He's so overrated. Yes. He's like so overrated. he does make a, his defense is not great. He does he does that, that like the commentator's been chatting about a lot the whole biting in thing, where he just like rushes up way too fast like without really thinking about it. His kicking is seriously helpful for Ireland, which I think is probably why he is still in the team and he is a bit of a like a beast. Really? Beast, Mate, he's comes. getting exposed and he's showing that like it's actually shown the level of northern hemisphere rugby and international level the fact that he's getting exposed especially the most important thing that i think he is like not great at is under the high ball and so mm. many so many of the northern hemisphere sides rely on like high balls and stuff it's so much so like tactical in that way i just don't think he's cut out for it i think he fits well into the irish team though because they, the way they play him is he drops really far back and they just use him so much for kicking like ridiculously far down pitch, which is so helpful for Ireland in part of their game plan. Whereas mm-hmm. I think like they have they have like speedy wingers, like they have Lama, like Earls, like like they got all these different guys who are kind of similar star wingers, and he is just like that different kind of wing, which I think is why he probably is making it into the squad. Just a yeah. bit of variation. I've said it before and I'll say it again. James Lowe and James and Gibson Park, both of them, obviously Kiwis, were nowhere near, like absolutely nowhere near the, the New Zealand squad, like mm. either of them. And that's why they came over to Ireland and that's why they now play for Ireland. And I just think it's a bit of an embarrassment, like that they're having to choose those two over like, anyone else really i think i, I think I, don't know. I think i think they're both overrated because I, I, I think as individual players james lowe is overrated but he fits well into the island squad like i i would if i was picking an irish squad i would definitely put him in on the wing for sure yeah i i, I like james lowe wouldn't get near the england team though 
like no. comparably no probably not <laughs> <laughs> he'd be nowhere near it it's james like i'd rather have ollie thorley than, than james lowe I don't know. Oh, just... Dory, Dory's an absolute tank. Man. Yeah. He's just been banned though, hasn't he? Did you guys hear about that? I didn't hear about that. He's been no, banned what? for four weeks for, or, or something or other in the Premiership that I didn't watch. But um, <laughs> someone look that up <laughs> whilst we move on to the next winger after establishing that James Lowe and, and James and Gibson Park are definitely overrated. James and Gibson Park's rubbish, man. He's mm-hmm. rubbish. He's the most average scrum half on, on the face of the planet. Surely they've got someone better. Where's I think Gun? no. I think I think Ireland like him because he does offer that kind of like like how Dupont is quite Irish. attacking. Yeah, <laughs> they like him because they like no, him because he's no. a kiwi. No, but what's cool? Jameson Gibson part off is that like attacking like threat where he's not like he's not. Yeah, he does, mate. He I always. I don't agree at all. I don't trying, agree. I don't think no, he he's, try, he's not like a guy who's just trying to pass it and just like trying to organize. He's he is like a kind of he is a classic like kiwi. Nine. He speaks, he, he speaks his Kiwi accent, and then everyone just lets him through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're from New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he is a seriously bang average New Zealand nine. Like I, I don't know why. Like Connor Murray's obviously a million times better. Um, John Cooney's obviously proven himself as to be a better nine. We talked about this last week with Mark, and Mark was saying like, "Why would you like Cooney is the same age, like nearly he's either the same age or like nearly the same age as um, Murray, but not he's as, better because he's better." Like, I'm sorry if if you if you have a better player, it doesn't matter about their age. Yeah, you know, Richard Wigglesworth was coming off the bench when Danny Kerr was starting to build for the World Cup, aren't they? I think I don't know. The World Cup's still a bit of time away. I'm sure you could blood a couple of new young players who are better than Bloody. Jameson Gibson Park. <laughs> Who's well, also not exactly young, by the way, is he? I have no idea how old he is. He was, he's been chilling out in Super Rugby for the last 10 years. Yeah. Not 10 Super years, but that's an exaggeration. But I just think, you know, Kiwis, go back to New Zealand, please. <laughs> <laughs> go home. <laughs> Kiwis, go home. Um, <laughs> yeah, Louis Zamet. Accent. Indeed, the thing is, I would have said before the Six Nations, I would have said underrated, and you guys would have laughed at me. This, this is what I'm loving it, loving the most. I select him, in, I think it was a we were selecting a team or something. I remember selecting Louis Sam, and you guys laughed at me. And now he's he's everyone's basically best best winger in Europe, everyone's gassing him up. Um, I would say right now, I think he's properly rated, like he's just so quick, I just can't fathom it. I, I <laughs> You guys see when in the game yesterday, where like Liam Williams like flung like a like a really flat pass to him, I was like, oh yeah, like that, that guy's got him covered. <laughs> he's just like, <laughs> like, <not laughs> even, like he's trying. He just glides. He glides. Yeah, like, 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 head body just move. His like... upper body just doesn't move. His legs just like this. Like, Wee. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't get it. I really do not understand. Like even like Anthony Watson or Johnny May. When they're like sprinting full pace, you can tell they're sprinting full pace. Did you see Johnny May in the match yesterday? He was like, <laughs> yeah. but like Larry Sammons just like <laughs> <laughs> absolutely gassing it. So yeah, I mean, I think his pace is just incredible. But I think people understand that at the moment, and he's unparalleled quick gassed pace. up. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, probably for Wales and Gloucester. Yeah, it definitely goes on the Lions tour though. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's he's Northern Hemisphere's answer to Rico Iwani. Rico Iwani. Rico yeah. Iwani's better though. Rico Iwani's bigger. Great tackles, mate. mate. Zam is like Zam is a bit of a beast, mate. You, what are you say? Yeah, you're saying yeah, that Rico yeah, Iwani's is overrated. Big, like no, six, I'd say that I'd say three. Louis Samet right now is on par with Rico Iwani was when Rico Iwani burst on the scene. You are lying, mate. Two completely different players. All Louis Samet does realistically is run around the outside of people, which is which is great. And like, yeah, he does have unparalleled pace, but Rico Ioane offers so much more. A, Rico can play 13 for a start. No, I'm not team. saying that. I'm saying when or Rico Ioane bursts on the scene for the All Blacks. As a winger, yeah. As a winger, I think he's, like, it's similar to the way in which Louis Samet is displaying now. That's what I think. So I think mm. Louis Samet has got to go on the Lions tour. Rico yeah, I think, I think that's a really tough one, but comparing them to R- Rico and... And LRZ, but um, I don't know. I think maybe I don't know. I think in 
it's such a tough one. I think obviously Zam is scoring tries, and I think as I'd say, he is just gas. But I think his gas helps in defense a lot as well because he's just able to catch up with anyone like and cover the ground. And obviously, he's not a small guy at all. Like he's like six foot two, so he just does kind of like he's able to take most players down. Even if even if they run past him, he just catches back up with them and tackles them. So mm. but I, I, Rico, Rico is a bit. I think Rico's more flair, like as all New Zealand players. I think. Yeah. I think that's the that is the difference. Like Zam isn't that flair; he's just gas. He doesn't you get need what I mean? To, mate. He doesn't need to though, does he? Yeah, yeah. Because he's so quick. I, he's, surely he's Rico, faster than Rico. I think maybe slightly. Rico is rapid though. Yeah, Rico yeah, is actually rapid. rapid. But I just, yeah, I don't know. I just think Rico's more of like a rounded player. Right now, Rico is more of a rounded player. Whereas I think that's probably where Zam's going to head towards. He's going to head, and he's going to end up more like a Rico Yuani. Yeah. And, um, but yeah. just imagine Zam facing up against Chess and Colby on the Lions tour. What's that going to look like? I don't know. That's a hard be hilarious. It just depends how good it is. The defence will definitely be a consideration. Because it's, it's just that would be the silliest match in the world. You're, uh, like Chess and Colby just stepping everyone. Like, and then Louis Zan just gassing everyone. It's like two, two completely opposites, but Chess is still quite mm. quick. So Louis Sam, he, he defends Chess and Colby, in my opinion. Like, who. Because yeah, no, you can't, you can't. I agree with you there, mate. If Chess and Colby gets past, Louis Sam just turns around and catches him up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so agree. I think, I think he will be able to defend Chess and Colby. Like, I think he, I think he's he's kind of got that just awareness. He isn't like he actually is quite aware in defense. I think like he knows when to like drift and how far to drift and stuff like that. His drift defense is quite good. In comparison with James Lowe, who can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, or even like Jacob Stockdale when he got stepped like two times in one game by Colby. Oh. Now he was Jacob always Stockdale. the most overrated winger in world rugby. Yeah, thank God he fell off the scene. Oh, oh my God. God. And, and, now, and now they have, to be fair, to be fair, we just said no one they bring an Irish player in over James Lowe. And then, then we said, thank God Jacob Stockdale's gone. <laughs> uh, so, oh well. He was so overrated. I don't know, oh, though, mate. Yeah. He was, he was pretty. He was doing what Louis Zam is doing right now, but for Ireland, not really, because he was. Never yes, he was, was, mate. He good. was. He was tearing it up. I don't believe you, mate. Yeah, he's just not. As, he just doesn't have that raw pace. So, like Louis Zam, as long as he doesn't lose his pace, then he's going to remain an incredible How's winger. Lose his pace. He's literally twenty years old. If anything, <laughs> he's literally got <laughs> anything is quicker. Not, um, yeah, exactly. Which means he's not. But Jacob Stoddard just didn't really have that. He just had. A, he just literally chipped over the top every time. And just <laughs> yeah, and bounce. scored against New Zealand once. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about like. Okay, so I didn't write these ones down. I just thinking about Wales and Nuri Samet. I've got a couple more players for Wales. I want to talk about after watching them yesterday against Italy. One of them is uh, Liam Williams, and the other one is Josh Adams. So, can we overrate or underrate them, please, Max? And let's do Liam Williams first. Then yeah, I think yeah. Liam Williams is underrated, to be honest. And um, I, I don't think he's incredible yesterday, but I just think the work he does on the pitch is not like he he does like the the hard nitty gritty work that I think a lot of the other backs wouldn't. He I I, like, I actually much prefer him on the wing than full back, to be honest. Um, but like aerially, he's incredible, and defensively, he's so good. His defense like, is really good. So he's good. Such a skinny guy, he yeah. like tackles anything. And he can also like he can he can also like jackal. Like, I remember watching the game like when he played for Saris um, the season before, and he literally won a jackal and won Saris the game. Oh yeah, when uh, Saris are cheating. Yeah, that that. <laughs> um, nah, under um, what did I say? Underrated, in my opinion, um, Liam Williams. Properly rated to me. Tad, tad overrated. Tad overrated. No. I think I think his passing was distinctly like against against Italy, and he's got Louis Sam or Josh Adams on the outside, and this is why I brought Josh Adams into it as well because I think both of them are distinctly overrated. I think Josh Adams is a decent. Josh Adams finisher. is. I would agree with you. Is overrated. Josh Adams is a decent finisher, but at the same time, like yesterday against Italy can even finish off like a simple try in the corner and also he dropped the ball like twice which is not what you want to do when you're the last like one on one outside on the outside um i just you know he's obviously scored a couple of nice nice tries but at the same time i just think 
I think a bit overrated, probably. He's good, but... Yeah, I agree with Josh Adams, so Liam Williams, no. Like, for me, Liam Williams is, like, after Stuart Hogg, I think he's the second best fullback out of the home nations. Um, Probably. Not Max Malins. Max Malins had a decent game yesterday. No, he... Like, Liam Williams is... He's easily... He'd easily make the the England team of 15, in my opinion. Like... Probably. But he's he's more of an out-and-out 15 than anyone, anyone England has. That's 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 the other position where England really struggle actually. Like nine, you could say that we struggle, but at the same time, Ben Youngs is like our best nine and is continuing to prove himself as our best nine. So why why do we need anyone else at the moment? Um, he'll he'll go for a couple more years at least. Uh, but yeah, fifteen as well for England. You know, Elliot Daly and Max Malins are they really like stepping up to the plate? Elliot Daly came on and made a bit of an impact yesterday. Max Malins got turned over a couple of times, and I think Max right. Malins, Max Malins for the future will be will be there. I think he. I didn't think he was impressive at all. I think he was quite poor yesterday. To be quite honest, poor. No, he wasn't poor. I just, Max Malins I just, I just didn't overrated. Think, yeah, mate, compared to his, how he'd been playing in Bristol, like fair enough that it was his first start, but I was just expecting a lot more. It was a big game to be fair. For, uh, France at Twickenham. That's. Yeah, a lot more. He's literally like held his own against probably the best team in the world and, and made some... Best team in the world, France, overrated, underrated. Probably. Overrated. But I mean, he's made some clutch plays as well, Max Mellins, in that game. Like, defensively, I thought he was really sound. Yeah, like, didn't he I let thought... that French prop like run over him? Mate, he, tr- he took him down. That's he took down I more shots. I just used to get so low to the floor that they simply just trip over your shoulder or something. You <laughs> hey, have who cares? He's taken him down. Like, I'd actually, like, defensively, I think Max Malins, and that's where people doubted him. I think Max Malins defensively yesterday was really good. I remember that's they did chip run up. over, let's face it. The guy just happened to trip over him. He's like it's a speed fine. He took him down. That's what matters. <laughs> like, they, they chips over the top. He dealt with all of them. Like, they, there was no threat in that, which they absolutely loved doing. Rassing style, chipping over his top to back a tower. Yeah, they, don't have, they don't have Finn Russell, so um, they can't do it as well. No, they have Jolly Dank, so who really cares? <laughs> um, but Max no, Mays. I thought defensively he dealt with it well. He made some good runs. I agree he made some mistakes. But for your first start against France, who were really good, I think he made a great account of himself. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say Max Malins, rugby ability, overrated. Chat up lines, overrated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on from that. Let's move on. All right, last one. Last one we've got for overrated, underrated is mullets, specifically the ones that we've seen sported down in the Super Rugby Aotearoa. Oh, they are quite popular at the moment. Also, English there are mullets some... are overrated. It's a bit cringe now, I think. What mullets. English ones? Like, yeah, I think, I think, I think the ones in like the Super Rugby that we see, like, they're just quite dank. Whereas I think like when you see like when you see like this when you see like random like people at uni with like just a mullet, which is just like they've just got a line, like it's not faded or anything, just like just like oh yeah, like Will Stewart got rid of his. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you now some of the super rugby mullets are just outrageous, realistically. I, I can't yeah. remember who I don't, I don't know many of the players that well, but there was like a nine I saw. I think Sam he was Nock. like Sam, Sam No, Nock. it wasn't Sam Not, no, he was like a Maori nine. And he had the most outrageous mullet. Like, not even just, like, the end of it, but, like, all the way down the back, like, completely grown out. Like, <laughs> it was so distracting from the rugby. <laughs> like, I don't care about your mullet, just play rugby. Mate, I <laughs> like, think it's a great cultural staple of Super Rugby Aotearoa, the mullet. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just, like, won by an English player in the Premiership. There's no way. Super, if it's in the Super Rugby, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly, mate. It makes the Super Rugby so much better to watch. And they're all dyed. They're all like pink and, and yeah, white and blonde and, and stuff like oh, that. Oh, you guys are so annoying. I might have to get a, a white mullet now just to piss you off, honestly. I don't do that. Do it, uh, it doesn't uh, work do for you, mate. You're Ed. English. It doesn't work. If I put my blues top on, then it will work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, we'll do a, a live episode of uh, giving Ed a mullet. <laughs> Mullet. Yeah, I'm <laughs> live. Mullet, mullet. Um, yeah, just mullet. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't know what to say there. Just shit. And that about wraps it up for this episode of Much Do About Rugby. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Rugby.